Well, folks, coming at you with part two of the UFOs that were captured in space by astronauts. A lot of people believe that we've never been to the moon. Let me know if you believe that. Let me know if you don't believe that. I believe that we did, but maybe it happens to be that some of the astronauts, they actually went to the Cheesecake Factory and they thought they were on the moon. Maybe that's what happened. Like this video, share this video. And uh, guys, get ready for this one. We got a lot of really good clips. Roll the night, April 10th, 1989, under a bright full moon, Pilot Andrew Danziger had just left Kansas City International Airport when something amazing happened. Out of nowhere, a strange- <laughs> Man, back in the days, this was considered to be the swag. If you had these glasses, you were, you know what I'm saying? You were a stud back then. A white circle appeared in the sky, looking almost like a second moon. It seemed to follow the plane, moving through the clouds as if it was dancing with them. The story gets even more curious when the captain mentions he had been watching this mysterious light since they reached high up in the sky. Holy. Despite being experienced pilots, used to spotting other planes, balloons, satellites and birds, they couldn't figure out what this was. The real moon was shining on the other side of their plane, making the whole scene even more baffling. Yeah, baffling. Then, in a surprising turn, the white light suddenly changed to red, took over the sky, and then just melted away into the clouds as they were coming into land. That's this unexpected change left a deep impression on Danziger. Danziger's story is part of a larger conversation among pilots. They spend countless hours flying and sometimes see things that don't have an easy explanation. Yeah, makes sense. Nine, Shag Harbor's UFO incident. Canada has its share of big mysteries, and one of the most talked about happened in Shag Harbor, Nova Scotia. And just last year, right, you, you, you guys remember, right, the, the Chinese lanterns, not necessarily lanterns, Chinese balloons, the spy balloons, they claimed that they shot a couple of them down, they even showed us the wreckage, but then they came out and said that they also have shot down a UFO in Canada, I believe also near the border of US and, uh, US and Canada, right, but they never really showed us the wreckage, and then the trail went cold, and we don't even know what happened, some believe it, some believe that it's fake, some believe that it's the, the beginning of the project, blue beam right some believe that and we made a video uh, on it recently and to to nobody's surprise and uh, i mean i expected it it doesn't show up in the searches either oh, shit. Oh, so yeah project blue beam videos do get suppressed very very heavily uh and uh, if you search project blue beam on video on youtube let me know what you see because what i see is like the controlled uh youtube uh search uh, for the pro uh, for the topic of project in regards to project blue beam and i get to see like videos that are super old and that's not even that relevant uh to the actual topic so it's it's kind of insane actually people often refer to it as Canada's own Roswell incident. So, okay. on a cool night, October 4th, 1967, this peaceful fishing spot turned into the center of a huge puzzle. Over 10 people saw something strange in the sky. It zoomed across, making a whistling noise, and then it crashed into the ocean with a big boom. Right Dang. after seeing this odd thing floating not too far from the shore, Laurie Wickens and his four buddies didn't waste a minute. They rushed to tell the Royal Canadian Mounted Police about it. What happened next was a big... Ah, oh, bad moves. Like, in this situation... I mean, I get it. Like, a normal person, I think, even if you were in that person's shoes, if I was in that person's shoes, I would call the cops. Yeah, absolutely. But looking at it from a third-person perspective, bad and rookie mistakes. You do not call the poly popo on that. <laughs> you don't do it, man. <laughs> because after that, it's gone. Everything is gone. Everything is removed. Men in black show up. I don't know if they really show up or not. For the longest one time, you would hear that Men in Black would show up, but nowadays it's like you don't hear about it uh, anymore. Right? Search with the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Navy, and the Royal Canadian Air Force, all trying to find out what it was. But even with all that effort, they didn't find anything they could show for it. Yeah, of course. They checked out every possible aircraft, whether it was for flying people around, for private use, or the military, all along the coast but they ended up scratching their heads because this mysterious thing didn't fit into any of those boxes. Even though the Navy tried, searching the bottom of the Gulf of Maine, whatever had made a splash in Shag Harbor didn't leave a single clue behind. 
just a bunch of questions and guesses that people are still talking about. It's one of the maybe, maybe the UFO really was waterproof. I think the UFO was <laughs> the UFO. I mean, it gotta be. Come on, guys. Like you're t you're telling me that there are millions and millions of years ahead of us in technology, and it's not waterproof. It gotta be waterproof. I think it it went inside the water and then popped back out and just went to and zoom past through everything. Or maybe it was uh, maneuvering underwater. Gotta be water. I, I know they're saying it crashed. Or maybe maybe that's true. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, who would know, right? How would One I those know? stories that just sticks around, making you wonder what happened? Eight, on uh -oh. a special flight. Uh -oh. History has its share of jaw-dropping moments, and there's one from aerospace history that's particularly standout. It happened on April 30th, 1962, involving the X-15, which was a super-fast aircraft. It could fly at a speed of 3,400 miles per hour Damn. above the Nevada desert near a place called Mud Lake. Honestly, like I really wish uh, normal commercial airliners also fly a little bit faster because like if you want to, for example, like if you want to go from East Coast, uh, US, Canada to let's just say uh, uh, Australia, it's going to take you approximately a day and the fatigue that's going to come in if you got connecting flights on top going to take you even longer, right? And for perhaps let's just say like your flight gets uh, delayed or some complication happens, it's bro like it's a disaster. It really is a disaster and you go there and you're like tired as shit. It's like yeah, we're in 2024 and we have the capabilities. I believe the reason we don't do it is because it's just about money at the end of the day. It's like not that cost cost effective and I, I feel like that they find it like the speed that we currently fly over planes or commercial airliners at it just is more efficient for them to make the money and also t for them to kind of like uh, because everybody's used to it and uh, although the flight tickets right now are way more expensive in comparison to before the COVID people are still like flying out and traveling like crazy right so the 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 tickets prices are not gonna go down uh anytime soon perhaps they're never gonna and it's just gonna be rising from here on out which is just sad and insane it's insane the economy is like crazy right now but but yeah i, I wish like they would double the speed perhaps if not triple uh, so we can go to destination faster and I, I would like to believe that a lot more people then would travel I would travel a lot more if the speeds were tripled because uh, you can go to certain place chill and come back home like you are just driving uh, uh, from a block to block Bruh. right I, I know don't I, I know it's different than just driving around the block but but you get the idea right like they gotta triple the speed man come on now the pilot was Joseph a Walker a very experienced guy working for NASA he was on a special flight that day aiming to go super high and something unexpected happened. While Walker was flying the X-15 and reaching up to about 200,000 feet, he saw something unbelievable. Uh oh! He noticed two objects that looked like discs zooming by his aircraft. This was no small thing. DVDs he was or... so struck by it that he immediately told the control room back at Edwards. And just like that, the people listening including the person writing this and about 20 others, found themselves hearing about this surprising event as it happened. But here's where it gets even more interesting. The X-15 had cameras on it that were always recording. These cameras caught this unusual moment on tape. They showed two white or silver disc-like objects flying in formation, passing by the X-15 like it was standing still and Crazy. then vanishing into the distance so it gotta be okay so it gotta be more than than 10,000 if like uh, if it was making the x-15 which was running at approximately 3,000 miles per hour if the UFO was making it look like a sitting duck, then yeah, gotta be that. And guys, as we get to the main event, real quick, I wanna say, if you're brand new, like and subscribe, helps out a ton. And if you wanna help support the channel, consider becoming a member by clicking the join button, helps out a ton. Uh, I, I definitely appreciate it. All right, let's get back to the content now, boo-boo. Flight, the team and the people who were part of the X-15 program got together for a briefing where they saw this footage. Even though they saw what happened, Everyone kept pretty quiet about it. What those objects were, where they came from, or where they went, remains a mystery. Mm. Kind of baffling. Seven. Baffle. Lieutenant baffle. Gorman engaged in a fight with a UFO. 
Spargo's night sky held a secret in 1948 that people still talk about. George F. Gorman, a lieutenant with the North Dakota Air National Guard. Project Blue Book. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit. Yeah, there's a difference between Project Blue Book and Bl Blue Beam. I know about Blue Beam. I heard of Blue Book, but I'm not sure what exactly it's all about. If you guys know, definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, yeah, I gotta get caught up on that too, man. I love the conspiracies found himself in an unbelievable situation. It was October 1st, 1948, and he was flying his P-51 Mustang about to land when a strange light, not attached to any known aircraft, grabbed his attention from about 500 feet below. Reaching out to the control tower, Gorman learned something even more puzzling. There were no other planes reported in that area. Driven by a mix of curiosity and maybe a bit of the daring spirit pilots have, he went closer to get a better look. What he encountered was a white light, pulsing then steady, as if it knew he was coming closer. Things kicked up a notch quickly. The light zipped around with incredible speed, making moves that didn't seem possible, even coming right at Gorman and then shooting up into the night disappearing at around 14,000 feet. By 9.27 p.m., whatever Gorman had seen was gone, leaving a trail of unanswered questions. Yeah. From the ground, two guys in the airport's control tower, Lloyd D. Jensen and She Johnson, also saw this strange light, making Gorman's story even more solid. Gorman was left with the impression that whatever he saw out there wasn't just moving randomly, it seemed like there was some intelligence behind it. 6. Turkish Pilots uh -oh. A flight left the beautiful spot of Bodrum, making its way to the bustling city of Istanbul, when something straight out of a mystery happened. The Turkish Airlines pilots were cruising along when they spotted a mysterious green light that oh, seemed dang. to wrap around the sky above their plane. It looks like a stadium just floating. Okay, from this angle it feels like a rock. With a the pilot, who's seen a lot in his flying days, reported seeing an object glowing with green lights zoom past them. It was flying higher, about 2,000 to 3,000 feet up, and then it just disappeared as quickly as it showed up. They thought it might be a UFO. Yeah. Where's the tower? This is Dave. Hey Dave, it's Superman in the head tower. This is Hey, did you see a flying disc out by C-17? Oh, uh, I don't even start, so... <laughs> Fly, you're seeing flying discs. Well, look at the pilot. I never understood, like, why... <laughs> These circuits don't have, like, good mics, though. Like, you're in a plane. Why not, like, try to install, like, a better <laughs> microphone, right? Like, uh... Yeah. But this radio chatter has, like, a very distinct sound that we're all familiar with i don't think they're gonna get rid of it but i, I feel like that we, we've got to have like better microphones though. come on now, right? and the ramp guys are telling us the c-17 they saw some flying disc but the story gets even thicker people started saying good. they saw this same green light over the salivary district in istanbul making everyone wonder what was going on despite all the buzz the folks who manage the airspace said they couldn't find any proof of something unusual up there that matched what the pilot said. Chicago? Some people tried to explain it away with a simple idea, a green oh, yeah. laser pointer shining up at the clouds. But oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This happened on uh, Chicago airport, right? The, the, fa the reason I, yeah, I was thrown off because he said Turkish airline only. So I thought it was going to be happening in Turkey. Okay, it's happening... Uh, in Chicago, yeah, have you heard about it? So Turkish pilots were seeing it, if I'm not mistaken, right? This uh, this actually kind of blew up online, I remember. But we didn't get to see much from it. We just heard about it, and everybody was like, oh, well, what, whatever, bro. Like it must have been like a drone, Chinese balloon, bro, Chinese balloon. If some people were saying that, uh, so yeah, this story quickly just everybody forgot about it. But I remember it blew up, kind of like a little bit, right, to a little degree. Let's be real. Pilots know their stuff. They can tell the difference between some laser pointer show and something out of the ordinary. The idea that a little laser could create such a huge, mysterious light show seems so. a bit too much. Five, mysterious, mysterious. event at Chicago O'Hare Airport. O'Hare so International Airport had a day that turned heads on November 7th, 2006. This wasn't just another busy day. It became the center of a story that folks still bring up. 
Witnesses, including almost a dozen United Airlines employees ranging from pilots to ground staff, reported seeing a metallic, saucer-shaped object. So this this thing sketch. wasn't making any noise as it hovered in the sky. And then it shot up so fast, it cut through the clouds. Okay, uh, the one that I had in mind wasn't this one. Uh, I believe it happened somewhere uh, like a couple of years ago, right? I don't remember the year. I would just say around like 2020, give or take, maybe before that, maybe after that. I don't remember the year, but this one, 2006, damn, holy crap, bro. Leaving behind a perfect... I was like, what, 10, 11 year old? 10, not even 10, I don't even know. Like, I'm 20, about to be 28 soon, so... Circle in the sky. Crazy. A reporter named John Hilkovich from the Chicago Tribune brought this story to everyone's attention, mentioning that the object hung around for about two minutes. At first, two minutes. the Federal Aviation Administration... F Man, like, y'all sick is uh, crazy, bro. We always hear that, like, these aliens are millions and millions of years advanced than us, and it's like, they cannot be faster. Like, two minutes, that's a very long bathroom break, bro. That's a very long... What were you doing, bro? What were you doing? You should be parking your UFO somewhere else and then go take, like, a nap or maybe, like, a bathroom break. And you should be done within, like, 10 seconds. Like, come on, bro. Like, you guys are, like, little green, green alien... Uh, yeah, like, well, what you got down there? Like, like a balloon of the size of a 737 or 747? Come on, dog. Like, you can go in the, the bathroom, you can piss. Matter of fact, y'all suckers don't even need to piss. Bruh. You're so advanced than us. Come on now. Like, yeah. FAA didn't want to talk about it, saying they didn't have any info on the sighting. But after some digging through a Freedom of Information Act request, bits and pieces of conversations about the U.S more like no freedom no freedom to get information on ufos ufo started to surface suggesting there might be more to the story the faa tried to explain it away at first by saying it was a weather thing called a of hole course. punch cloud of course but the of weather course. that day didn't support that theory of then course. they tried to say it was because of the airport lights but those lights weren't even on when the sighting happened. Yeah, weather balloon, man. It was a weather phenomena, military exercise. They always, yeah, use these words. Yeah, whatever, whatever. We get it, man. We get it. Even with so many people seeing the same thing, there was never an official investigation into what happened that day. They did it behind the scenes, for, for sure. 1986 oh. UFO Japanese sighting oh, by Japanese holy. pilots. Back in November 1986, some okay, is this the one where a jet? I think it is. I I believe I recognize that face. It's like one of the Japanese pilot actually drew the UFO they saw. They were like there was like a massive ball like UFO coming from under the plane and comes in front of them. Holy crap! Imagine you see that, bro. Like you're you must be frozen with fear because you're like, is this gonna hit my plane? Is it not? I cannot go up and down because. I, you know, if I do decide to do that, what if I hit the UFO? Yeah, crazy. And if you're in a UFO, like, if you're an alien watching this video and you're in a UFO, like, maintain distance, bro. Social distancing, right? Maintain distance, bro. Come on, bro. Like, I, we don't want to, like, bump into each other. On the ground, we can bump into each other for sure. But, like, come on now, you know, like, on the in the air, it's different, bro. So, it's, it's different. Something happened that left people scratching their heads involving a Japanese Airlines cargo flight over the cold skies of Alaska. The captain, Kenju Tarauchi, and his crew were just flying along, carrying French wine, thinking it was going to be a routine flight. Oh, but then... Oh, they were there for the Francais wine. Yeah, okay, je comprends maintenant, là. C'était à cause de ça, parce qu'ils voulaient voulait boire, là. Ah ouais, là. Ah ouais, si, je pète, là. Uh, I, I think, yeah, they wanted to just... They were there for the French wine. Come on, man, like... Something unexpected turned their journey into a major talking point among UFO stories. At first, Captain Tarauki thought they might have run into US fighter jets, maybe on a patrol because it was the Cold War era and they were near the Soviet border. But then, these objects did something that made him realize yeah, one. they weren't any normal jets. He described how two spacecraft suddenly appeared right in front of their plane two? shining so bright that the cockpit lit up and he could feel the warmth on his face. I heard about one. Okay, These maybe weren't this your average aircraft. Tarauchi described them as square-shaped 
with some kind of propulsion system that had circular exhausts creating interesting patterns. Mm -hmm. Besides just being a sight to behold, these things somehow managed to mess with their communications to the ground, which just added to the whole mystery. Now, that's what that's what normal robbers do, right? Like they try to mess up and hack the communication so you cannot like communicate, right? Tarauchi's story did raise some eyebrows, especially since his crew didn't quite see everything he did. They saw the lights, yes, but didn't go as far as to call them spacecraft. And then there were skeptics, like the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, who thought maybe what they saw could be explained by natural causes, like light bending through ice crystals in the clouds. They thought this sounded more reasonable than visitors from outer space, but it still didn't clear up all the questions. Three, it's the aliens! It's U.S. The aliens. Navy confirmed. It's the aliens! Three UFO sightings. Towards the end of 2019, the U.S. Navy made a surprising move yeah. by admitting yeah, to yeah. the existence of what they call unidentified we, areas. Yeah, this is something that we have seen so many times, so we're gonna like skip it to the next one, honestly, because I know you guys are sick and tired of it as well. Two v-shaped ufos sighted from 1982 to 1986 something really strange was happening in the sky above the hudson valley not far from new york city this wasn't just a story about seeing something odd once or twice over 5,000 people said they saw something unusual specifically v-shaped objects flying in the sky covered in bright colorful lights it all started on new year's eve in 1982. A retired police officer from Kent, New York, was the first to notice it. He thought it was just a regular plane at first, but then he realized it was uh -oh. moving too slowly and quietly to be one. As more people came forward, the story got even more interesting. Most said they saw a V-shaped object flying slowly, unlike any plane they knew. But there were also stories about a round object that could suddenly disappear or move incredibly fast. One of the most talked about... If I'm not mistaken, like, the actual stealth bomber that the US has also has kind of like a V-shape too, right? Now, I'm not very much... Uh, I'm not a, 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 his, a history buff. I'm not a history buff, so I don't... I don't know what year they made that, but but 1986 is when that happened, right? So did we... Uh, where we uh, had the stealth bomber in possession back then... I think we did, but 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 I, I'm pretty positive that if these people are saying that th this thing, whatever it was, was moving slow, I don't think like stealth, a stealth bomber can move slow. Yeah, it's uh, it's stealth and it has a V shape, surely, but it still would need to move a little faster to stay stay above the ground, right, and stay in air. So if, if they're really like noticing that this thing was moving slow, yeah. Okay, that's uh, quite baffling. Hashtag baffle gang. Moments was when this quite object baffling. flew right above the Indian Point nuclear plant, just 30 feet off the ground. The person in charge of security there thought about trying to get it to leave, but then it just disappeared, leaving no evidence it was ever there. One. Oh no. Leroy Chiao reported a UFO. Oh my God. So up there in space, way above us, where the International Space Station zooms around Earth super fast, like over 17,000 miles per hour fast, there were these two space travelers, Leroy Chiao and Salijan Sharipov, back in 2005. They were out on a spacewalk, which means they were outside the station, doing their job to put up navigation stuff, all while floating about 230 miles above Earth. Okay. During this, Chiao saw something odd. A bunch of lights lined up in a neat upside-down V-shape, just speeding across the dark space. He thought it was super weird. Now, Sharipov didn't see it because he was facing the other way. Okay, I'm not sure. It Was that the video? Do not, do not rewind it! But was that the video or was that just uh, another one of the uh, B-roll footage? I wish we had like more footage because we're seeing like a lot of B-roll footage. I get it, for some uh, stories you might not have the, the video so you gotta like slap in like some B-roll footage. I understand that part but yeah, this one I, I hope because I remember there was a, there was a UFO that showed up like a v-shaped ufo uh, and i made a video on it as well on the channel and nasa shut down the live feed as that happened as well 
Mm, yeah, yeah. But they got it on video and pictures. Let's see if this whole thing got a lot of people excited when it was shown on a TV show about NASA's mysteries, especially in an episode asking if we're alone in the universe. Okay, I think the fact that he showed that video again, I think it's that video. Perhaps might not be a B-roll footage, and if this is the video, okay, I, this is the video I'm, I'm seeing for the first time. There was another, like, V-shape that uh, was actually crazy, and NASA shut down the live feed back then when it happened. They suggested those lights might have been just from a fishing boat way down on Earth, but not everyone's convinced by that explanation. Even though Chiao saw this strange light show, he's not jumping to say it was aliens or anything, but he's still really interested in all the mysteries out there in space, like if there's anyone else out there looking back at us. So. Yeah. Guys, uh, this is the part one. We made a part one of this video. Obviously, this was part two. If you have not seen part one, click on this video on the screen. On the left, this video is on my other channel. I started a brand new channel. Check both of these videos out and I will see you right there.